not a problem. We will begin with the first question today coming from, I guess we'll start with uh, Steve Hummer. Well, uh, Nate, there's <laughs> so many things to touch on here, but um, how would you, I guess, how would you, uh, aside from Trey, how would you judge uh, John Collins' uh, contribution on all fronts? I thought he was great tonight. And, you know, uh, tonight we had to do a good job of finding our matchups. Uh, they were switching a lot. Uh, we uh, were patient and we found our matchups. Uh, John had some matchups in the paint and just really did a solid job of scoring uh, when he, he had uh, the matchups in the paint defensively, just really did a good job. Uh, again, uh, you know, defending uh, the ball, you know, he had to defend three positions tonight. Uh, Middleton, he was on Lopez, he had uh, Giannis and uh, just did a solid job. You know, uh, he's, he's been consistent uh, and that guy who, uh, has helped us really all season long. Just another solid job, our job. Next question from Vinny Goodwill. Nate, if, if I, my math is correct, I think this is the sixth road game you guys have won in this playoff run. That's kind of rare for a team so young. Or did you see that type of poise and, you know, the sort of don't scare mentality? Did you see it translating this way? I I, I felt we, we built... Uh, ourselves to uh, be able to play on the road. And, uh, you know, I've, I've told them that, uh, that, you know, they're built for this. And, you know, again, tonight we got off to somewhat of a slow start. I thought we just needed to get our second win. Uh, looked like we uh, uh, just was uh, running in mud that first quarter. And uh, we just stay with it, uh, continue to stay with it. Uh, we kind of got a rhythm, uh, found out what they were doing defensively. Uh, we were able to uh, take advantage of some matchups. Uh, you know, defensively, uh, we brought the defense to the floor again in the second half and was able to uh, come up with big stops. But they really just kept their poise, kept their composure, uh, you know, uh, for the full 48 minutes, which is uh, what is required um, in these playoff games. All right, we're going to take a couple from the room. We're going to start with Sarah. Hey, you guys were down. She was seven, about four minutes to go. Just what was the biggest thing that got you guys back into the game? Well, again, we, you know, we've been in this position uh, many times and, you know, seven uh, point game, this really three possession game. Uh, we, we feel that, well, we, we know what we need to do. We need to get stops and we need to execute and, uh, and score. And, you know, th they did another solid job of uh, executing down the stretch. Again, finding that matchup. Uh, they went to really one through five switching uh, and it became somewhat isolation ball. So it was just a matter of us finding the matchup that we wanted um, on the offensive end of the floor. And then, you know, defensively, I thought Solomon came in and really did a nice job, uh, you know, defending uh, with that, that small lineup going down the stretch. I know you've seen Trey score a bunch of points before, uh, but what impressed you most about him doing it on this kind of stage against this kind of opponent as well? I mean, they, they have really good defenders. And, you know, what I, I uh, respect about Trey, he's going to always stay aggressive. And, you know, he continued to stay aggressive and, 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 and take his shots. And tonight, uh, you know, those, those shots were, were falling uh, for him. I thought he did a good job of, uh, of again, uh, you know, reading the defense and getting the ball and putting the ball in the hands of guys who had their matchups. Uh, John had a few matchups. Uh, Gallinari had uh, some matchups. And uh, so good job of uh, reading the defense, getting us organized and executing uh, against their defense. Chris with the athletics. Nate, what do you say about the mental makeup? I just hope that they, you know, they're maturing and they're, they're showing that growth and uh, they start to believe in, uh, you know, what we are doing and uh, how we, we practice and condition ourselves to play. Uh, you know, we, we just try to play the game the right way, uh, play with the energy, uh, play selfless basketball. 
Uh, and, you know, always, you know, we, we talk about that fist and, and being connected. I, I think that's what you're seeing from these guys uh, going down a stretch on both ends of the floor. Joe Barden. Hey, Nate, I'm right behind the TV here. Um, you said uh, earlier that you guys were built for this when you were asked about winning on the road. But uh, on March 1st, you were 14 and 20. And Trey and John weren't getting along. And there were all these, all these problems. How, how hard was it to fix what was wrong at that point? And, and what do you mean by you're built for this now? We, we just continue to condition ourselves to play this style of basketball. Um, you know, aggressive uh, defensively. Uh, we, want, we want to build two-way guys. Uh, we, we understand that we have uh, depth. So we want guys, you know, unselfish basketball, um, you know, playing the game together uh, and, you know, committing to each other. Uh, you know, so those were the things that, you know, basically when I, I, I took over, uh, you know, that's just what I believe in. And I, I believe that you play the game the right way, you play the game together, uh, you give that effort, uh, you're going to give yourself an opportunity to win games. And uh, they've been able to uh, learn how to uh, execute uh, down the stretch. Uh, you know, Trey continues to show growth in running a team. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they continue to uh, improve uh, all, of, all of them playing together. You know, so again, it's different guys, different night. It was Kevin the other night. It, it was it was Trey tonight. John did a real uh, solid job. You know, Solomon didn't play much in the last game. He stepped in tonight and gave us some really good minutes. Uh, you know, so uh, they continue to just believe in each other and play the game the right way. Right, Tim. And it, uh, it seemed like, especially early on in the game, the Hawks were pretty, or the Hawks were pretty content to let Trey try and get to that quarter range and kind of take those shots and stick to everybody else. Was that the way you saw it? And do you think that because he had so much success with that, you guys were able to kind of dictate the way he went from there when he was on the way to the ball small? Well, that's their defense. You know, they, 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 uh, their guards do a good job of uh, sending you to Lopez, who's deep in the paint. And, uh, you know, basically, you know, that's the shot that they want to force you to make. Uh, you know, Trey has to make a read in a situation like that, uh, whether he has the shot or he has the kick out. And, um, you know, but that's their defense. Um, you know, they, they keep their five in deep drops and, uh, you know, force you to try to shoot over their guards and their bigs. But it seemed like as the game went along, they kind of switched away from that. And in part, I would assume because of the success Trey had. And do you think that some of that momentum he was able to get early in the game was part of why he was able to have so much success kind of going into those matchups and taking advantage of them down the stretch also? Yeah, I mean, they, they adjusted their defense to try to cover uh, our guards who were attacking. And that's when they went to basically switching everything. Uh, and, you know, again, we this is something that we have seen. We've con really try to condition our guys to uh, be prepared for, uh, because we talked about in playoff basketball, you're gonna see this defense. And uh, once you see this defense, now you gotta find out where the ball should go, and then you gotta win the matchup. And uh, tonight we was able to uh, win the matchups when they went um, to their switching defense. Okay, we're gonna take one question from the room, Steve. Then we'll turn it over to uh, the Zoom room. How a 19 rebound stuff to put back stuff to call ahead for good. There are teams that pride themselves on under the board, you know, plus six rebound margins. How big is a rebound in general? It's key. You know, uh, they are uh, an elite offensive rebounding team, and uh, that is a major key for us to rebound the basketball. Um, and tonight, I thought we early, we gave up some offensive rebounds uh, in that first quarter, uh, really the first half. And uh, we started to clean it up and we won the boards, but we got to do it a better job of rebounding uh, the basketball because they, 
uh, they do a great job. Their guards uh, get in there and uh, they fight for those extra opportunities. Uh, you know, the bigs are tapping it out for extra possessions. Uh, so we got to do a better job on the boards and we got to do a better job of keeping the ball in front of us. I mean, we gave up 70 points in the paint um, tonight. And um, I, I, I think our defense can be better than that. It needs to be better than that. Jeff Schultz from The Athletic. Nate, uh, you, you referenced the road wins earlier. Um, this is the third straight series that you opened on the road with a win. Uh, obviously, you didn't have a full strength bogey. You've had other issues. It doesn't seem like anything phases your players. Um, have you ever been involved with a team at all like this where nothing seems to phase them? It doesn't really seem to matter what the odds are, or what people say. Uh, we, we've talked about that uh, from the beginning, Jeff. Uh, just you can't listen to the outside noise, uh, good or bad. So, uh, we know that, you know, the next game is going to be even harder and uh, we're going to have to play better uh, to get that win. And that is our focus. You know, each night uh, we come out and play. We want to give, give everything that we have. Uh, and uh, we want to... Uh, execute out there and whatever the result, you know, whether we win or we lose, you know, we'll look at tape tomorrow. There's, there's a lot of uh, room for improvement. We're going to need to be better. Uh, and that's our mindset, you know, not listening to what folks are saying uh, that we, we can or cannot do. Uh, it's all about us, you know, the, the guys that's in the room, uh, you know, those are the guys that's going to get it done. And, you know, that's the, uh, the, uh, the approach that we uh, have taken. Is there a ceiling for your team? I don't know. You know, we're going to just continue to try to come out and be better than we were uh, in our last out. Mark Schwartz from ESPN. Hey, Nate. Trey is taking a master's class right now against world-class defensive teams world-class individual defensive players. And this is his first playoff run of his career. And he's doing it at such an elite level. What is it that allows him to conquer every challenge with such poise at this time of year in his first go around? Well, I think he just has uh, the skill that these top players have in this league. You have to put him uh, with the top guys in the league. Uh, he, he really doesn't have a weakness on the offensive end of the floor. Um, you know, he can shoot from deep. You know, he stretches the floor. Uh, he has a mid-range game. Uh, he will uh, pass the ball, uh, find his teammates. Uh, he shoots free throws well. Uh, so, you know, he's seen all the, you know, the, the defenses that, teams have uh, played against him. And we've talked about this throughout the season. He's seen bo a boxing one. Uh, he's seen bigger defenders. Uh, he's seen physical uh, defenders. You know, uh, he has seen uh, teams trap and try to get the ball out of his hands. And this is part of the growth that he has to go through. And the good players, they go through this and they learn from it. Uh, but they don't allow uh, the different coverages to take them out of their game. They still find ways to be productive. And uh, Trey has been able to do that. Would you say he has met or maybe even exceeded your expectations of what he could do on this stage in his first go around? I think he's, I mean, he's a young player. So there, there's a lot more room for, uh, for growth uh, for Trey. Uh, you know, this is the first time uh, in the playoffs and, you know, as I uh, basically working with him during the season, I really felt he was built for this time of the season. Uh, he's a fearless player. Uh, he's, an, you know, he's a uh, confident player. Uh, and, you know, he's a kid that, you know, every second that he's on the floor, uh, he's given it to you. You know, he's given everything that he has. And, uh, you know, so I, I really feel that uh, his game, his style of play is really built for this time of the season. 
James Hill. Nate, there's something special about your ball club. Can you talk about the intangibles? And again, they're able to go on the road, get that first one again, and then just kind of set the foundation for a great series. I don't know. You know, we, we I, I, I love working with these guys. Uh, you know, they, they, uh, they bought into, you know, what we've tried to uh, give them uh, as far as the mindset that they need, uh, uh, you know, establishing their style of play. Uh, they've committed to being better. Uh, they've committed to being uh, to uh, each other. And, uh, you know, all these guys are sacrificing uh, to uh, make this team better. And uh, they, they've just, they've, they've done that. They've been doing it. And they continue to do it. And uh, again, I think, you know, uh, a lot of teams, really all NBA teams have a, a lot of talent. Uh, but when you get a team that is committed to each other, uh, playing the game the right way, playing the game for each other, uh, playing the game to win, uh, you, you got something special there. And I, I really do feel that we do have something uh, special with this group. Coach, in closing, uh, Clint, can you talk a little bit about him hitting the glass and, and competing on the boards? Yeah, well, he had this, uh, the assignment to, tonight of, uh, you know, he leave uh, the Philadelphia series guarding Embiid, and tonight he had Giannis. Uh, you know, I, we, we believe in him. Uh, you know, he's been the anchor uh, to our defense, uh, you know, both guarding uh, the ball, help defense, rebounding the basketball, uh, you know, setting screens, freeing up uh, the ball. You know, he's just a, such a big part of uh, this team and uh, how we try to attack. Uh, he's become, you know, a, 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 a really uh, important uh, part to uh, the success of this team. All right, we'll do two more. Chris Kirchner, what's we'll the other Nate, since you've taken over, what have your conversations been like with Trey? Uh, we're just talking to him about it, you know, from, from one point guard to another. And, you know, a, a young, uh, talented uh, point guard, you know, I've, I've been in his position before. Uh, you know, I certainly don't ha have the talent that he has uh, on the offensive end. Of the <laughs> uh, and, you know, basically, you know, this team was trying to, an organization is trying to take that next step. He is a big part of this organization taking the next step because he is the guy um, that is uh, is going to lead us to that style of basketball. So there's a lot of conversation on um, you know good and bad, uh, you know, as far as watching film and you know talking about things that happen out on the floor and really giving him more control to uh, run the team. You know, I think in the last really, uh, starting probably the last series, he's calling most of the plays. And I want that because I want him to have a feel for uh, what's going on, how to get his teammates involved. And uh, he's done a really good job of doing it. As a point guard, how important is it to have that leadership where not only you can – you know, run, the, run the offense and, and call out plays, but to have that ability to get your teammates to trust in you to be that leader. Well, basically, it's, it's, uh, he has to show that growth and he has to show that trust uh, in his teammates. And he's done, you know, he's, he's done that with Bogey. You know, he did it the other night with Kevin, you know, getting Kevin the ball late uh, in game seven. Uh, you know, tonight, you know, taking his, uh, you know, while being aggressive, uh, he saw that we had matchups in the post and he made sure that uh, John and Gallo had the ball. So it's really adapting to, uh, as we talk about conditions, especially in the fourth quarter, uh, he's been able to slow down and, and, and manage that fourth quarter by adapting to conditions. And uh, he's doing a good job of getting us organized and executing.
Right. Tell us your final questions when it comes to care perspective. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask um kind of how you would assess Bogey and how he's feeling on that knee. He doesn't look fully himself, but obviously he's trying to give you everything. He is giving us everything, and um, you know it's, it's it's pretty obvious that uh, there's some soreness there. But uh, again, this is the way this team has been built. They just he does not want to sit out. You know, he's trying to give us whatever minutes uh, he can give us, and uh, it really has helped us uh, the last few games uh, being able to have him out there. Uh, because he's still a threat and uh you know but as these guys have uh, been doing this all season long Thanks.